What's up guys, my name is Brandon and I've been using iOS 14 beta one every day this week so far. And while it has been stable and enjoyable to try out all the new features and check out all the new changes and things like that, there are still a lot of issues and really just a lot of things that I want to discuss with you guys. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about some new hidden features in iOS 14 that I did not cover in my initial what's new video, which by the way, if you didn't see that, I went over 90 new features and changes in iOS 14 that will be linked up in the cards and down in the description below. But we're also gonna be talking about some bugs, the performance, the battery life, connectivity, and so much more. So let's start off with the performance and the stability because this is hands down the most raved about thing I've read from you guys in the comment section that I've seen on Reddit and just all over the internet. So many people have talked about how stable iOS 14 beta one is, and I would agree, but I only agree to it being stable for a beta. I've seen people say how it's good enough to be like the final and they'd be happy if this was the final and no, no chance. I mean, it's extremely stable, don't get me wrong, for a first developer beta. And it seems that Apple's internal change to bring us you know, a more polished software for iOS is already starting to show and it's already starting to improve but there are still a lot of bugs in iOS 14 beta one. So I've had random resprings, notably when changing wallpaper. So when I go into my settings here and then go to wallpaper and then choose new wallpaper, let's see if it does it here on the spot, probably not, but let's go ahead and try to see if we can get a respring. But this happened to me like three or four times now this week when I would go to set the wallpaper. You can see it takes a while too. It seems like it takes longer than it did in previous versions of iOS, but my device would just randomly respring here sometimes. And like I said, it happened three or four times in this specific spot. And there have been quite a few other bugs as well, which I'll talk about here in a moment. But really aside from that, it's been pretty good. And like I said, for a first beta, it is extremely impressive to see what Apple has done. And it's definitely been an improvement over iOS 13. And this gets me very excited for the public beta of iOS 14, which by the way, for those asking, I'm predicting that we'll see the first beta on July 6th. So Monday, July 6th is when I'm expecting to see the first beta of, or the first public beta of iOS 14. If not, I would say the latest date is probably July 13th, the following Monday. Apple just said July, they didn't really specify a date, but I would imagine it's one of the first two Mondays of July. And that's when I'll be updating my main device, my 11 Pro Max to iOS 14 beta. But anyways, performance and stability, like I said, are good. However, I have seen mixed experiences with battery life. So for me personally, battery life has been pretty solid on all devices except for the iPhone 6S and the iPad Pro, which of course is running iPad OS 14. Now the battery life on this device here, the iPhone 11 Pro has been actually pretty solid. It's been about the same as iOS 13, which I really didn't expect. As you can see, I'm just using pretty much every device. I'm not gonna have a ton of usage on one individual device, but you can see here the usage over the past week. But anyways, yeah, so battery life is pretty good on the iPhone 11 Pro. It's pretty much on par with the last version, the last public release of iOS 13. But again, for the iPad on iPadOS 14 and the iPhone 6S, battery life just is not very good. Now, of course, the battery life on the 6S is subjective, and I understand that I use devices with much bigger batteries, but it's still just simply bad. I mean, it's worse for me than any public release of iOS 13. So if you have a 6S and you're on the fence about updating, I would hold off until at least the first public beta. And as for the battery life on the iPad, it could be because I'm using the Magic Keyboard, but it seems to be draining more than iPadOS 13. And like I said, it could be because of everything still being optimized with the keyboard, maybe because of the new scribble feature i'm not sure but i've seen multiple other people report bad battery life on the ipad as well but i'm really curious to see what your guys battery life has been like so let me know down in the comment below if your battery is good or if it's bad and let me know which device you're using because of course it's early on we have a lot of mixed results so far now as for new features go i already showed you guys like i said more than 90 new features and changes but as always the more you use the software the more you're going to discover and of course i found some more new changes here so now in ios 14 you can change the bluetooth name of devices that are not just Apple devices. So in the past in iOS 13 and previous versions, you could only change the name of Apple devices, like you know your AirPods, your Apple Watch, whatever you were connected to via Bluetooth. But now you can actually change the name of any device that's not just an Apple device, which is pretty neat. Also, when you go to mark up a photo or a screenshot, you'll see that we have a brand new menu here. So when you click on the little color wheel right there, you'll see we have a completely new interface that we had in iOS 13. And just for reference, here's what it looks like on iOS 13 here on the left hand side so we didn't have spectrum we didn't have sliders we just had this little tiny 
little picker right here. But now in iOS 14, we have a ton more that we can do with the colors here. You also have this little plus right here as well. So we're gonna add different colors. So I'm gonna pull in the iPhone 6S for this next feature. And that is that now when you go into landscape mode on the keyboard, you'll notice how the emoji and the number keys have swapped places. So I don't know about you guys, but this was a small pet peeve of mine in iOS 13 and past versions where these two would be swapped and I never really wanna press the numbers, I always wanna press the emojis, and now that's closer to the space bar and closer to your thumb. Also, I had a lot of people asking if you could do the iPhone 11 feature where you can like change the quality and everything from the camera application on the iPhone 6S, and unfortunately, no, you cannot. That's what happens when you try to press on 4K or anything like that to change the quality or the frame rate. You cannot change that for whatever reason on the iPhone 6S, just on newer devices. Now also new in iOS 14, if we go to our settings and go to general about and scroll all the way down, you'll see that we have a new section here called carrier lock. And this will show if you have any SIM restrictions or if the device is locked to a carrier, which is gonna be really great for those trying to buy used phones. So this is gonna prevent a lot of scams and a lot of really upset people when they buy phones off eBay that are not what they expected. I'm also loving the weather application and I've noticed that the weather app is using a lot of Dark Skies data. So obviously Apple acquired Dark Sky, the application, the weather application, and now they are using a lot of that data, especially for when it's raining. So it's raining right here. So when it shows this right here, the next hour forecast, that lines up exactly with what Dark Dark Sky has in their application. So it's definitely taken from there and it is extremely, extremely useful. I almost don't need Dark Sky anymore. The only reason I'm keeping it is because of the animated map, but you get a lot better features now inside of the weather app. It's so much better than it was in iOS 13. Now also one feature that I really like is that in iOS 14, you now get notifications when nearby devices are low on battery. So say I had these AirPods Pro and they were connected to like my iMac or somebody had a MacBook downstairs and these were connected to them, but we had the same iCloud account then it would show me on my device, even if we're not connected to this phone, that my AirPods are low on battery. So now you get you know low battery notifications for nearby devices, which is really, really neat. I've also really been loving the sleep tracking in iOS 14 and watchOS 7. So of course I wear my Apple Watch to sleep to track my time spent asleep. And you can see here, my average time in bed is eight hours, 22 minutes. My average time of sleep is, for some reason, it's a little bit smaller than that. So that may be a bug, but the averages are a little bit wonky. But I love the graphs and everything you could see in here as well. And that was my schedule when I was pumping out those videos like crazy. I wasn't going to sleep till super late. But anyway, you can see all the data in here. And it's just really nice to have. And if you guys don't have this yet, if you guys have not used it yet, you should definitely go ahead and try it out. You can set sleep goals and you know sleep measurements and things like that, which is pretty neat. We also got some nice CarPlay improvements in iOS 14. So you'll notice that you can change wallpapers now in CarPlay. It's very similar to iOS. You can't use your own photo, but you just get the selection of pre-made wallpapers from Apple. You also have the new Siri look in CarPlay. And then also on the maps, you can see you now get the red light camera and just red light indicators on the maps, which is pretty neat. You can also use Siri for sharing your ETA, which is pretty cool. Also, when we go to add an alarm or change the time or anything like that, you'll notice that we now have a new layout here where we basically have to type in the time like this. So instead of the scroll wheel that we had previously, which I personally like better, we now have this where you basically just have to type it out instead of visually see it and scroll on a wheel. So I don't know if you guys like that better or not. Me personally, I like the old way better in iOS 13 when we had the wheel, but that's also changed here in iOS 14. And there are a lot of other features and changes that are in iOS 14 as well. I am saving some of those for my iOS 14 hidden features video. So if you guys wanna see that, make sure you are subscribed with that bell icon clicked. So now let's move on to the bugs and things that need to be fixed or changed. So first things first, the music widget is completely useless in iOS 14. So there are more important bugs, but I really just wanna point this out because it's not a bug, but it is something I just wanted to mention. So the music application should definitely have, you know, your playback options on it. So your back, your next, your play pause, something. It should not just sit there and show you, you know, songs that you can click on and open up the full, you know, music application. I don't wanna do that. I wanna just quickly do it from my widget. So hopefully Apple implements some type of playback controls on the music widget. But anyways, moving on to the actual bugs now in iOS 14. The first thing is extremely annoying and that is trying to put icons in a folder is near impossible now in iOS 14. So look at this. I'm gonna try to put maps in the folder A right here. Look at this, I'm like playing a game of chicken with this folder. I, it's literally impossible to put it in that folder and this drives me nuts. So it seems like every time there's an iOS update, this just gets harder and harder. And I don't know what it is, but I cannot put it 
in that folder. So that's a bug that Apple needs to fix and it's extremely annoying. Also, the Twitter application is extremely buggy in iOS 14, it crashes, it lags. You can see there, it's just very choppy. When you add media to a tweet, it sometimes crashes and it's just really difficult to use without it crashing. So same thing happened with Instagram and Facebook as well. So I'm assuming these apps just need to update before we see stability in them. Now also one of the most popular bugs has to do with widgets and you guys will notice that the widgets are just empty sometimes. So sometimes the weather will show the wrong location. Sometimes the widgets will just be completely empty like news will be completely empty. And sometimes also when you tap on this and go to edit, when it turns around, sometimes it's like backwards, like the text is backwards, which looks pretty weird, but there's just a lot of issues so far with widgets, which is kind of expected. It's the first beta. That's a brand new feature in iOS. It's never been done before. And this is the first time Apple's put it out into the wild. So bugs are expected, but there are a lot of them, like even in widgets right here or in battery rather, sometimes my AirPods will show the wrong percentage. So I know my AirPods will be at like 98%, but on here it'll show like, so look at that. 58% and it shows 57% right there. So that's just another example. Sometimes the percentages just don't match up, which is definitely a bug. Also, this is a hilarious bug. So I saw this over on Reddit. So when you go to change the wallpaper, sometimes the widgets will appear super big Excel widgets like that. So that's another bug that needs to be fixed with the widgets. And then another major feature in iOS 14 that was kind of hidden and it got a lot of press after the fact, but back tap is a major new feature here in iOS 14. But what I found is that it's extremely sensitive and sometimes it could get annoying. So if you're like on a bike ride, it will get triggered often. If you set your phone down, it'll get triggered often as well. So from now on, I would recommend turning off double tap because it's a lot less easy to triple tap the back. So it's a lot less sensitive when you do triple tap. So I don't know, I just found that back tap is extremely sensitive and Apple definitely needs to work out, you know, what classifies as a tap with your finger as opposed to just movement and you know hitting against your thigh when you're on a bike ride or something like that. And speaking of being too sensitive, the sound recognition is also a little bit too sensitive here in iOS 14 and sometimes it's just flat out wrong. So sometimes it'll think it heard like a fire alarm or like an animal or something like that and it was completely silent. So I don't know what's going on, but Apple definitely needs to figure out the sound recognition as well. I love the feature, I love the thought of it, but it's just not extremely accurate yet and sometimes things that don't even sound close to like a fire alarm get picked up and it really confuses me and makes me wonder if I'm the one that's really hearing impaired. Now also I had a few people message me about not being able to see the new Siri animation. So when you go to enable Siri, some people would not be seeing that new animation and that's because you need to go into accessibility and then to Siri and disable type to Siri. So for whatever reason, when you have type to Siri enabled, here's what happens. So you can see you get like the old Siri and it takes up the entire screen. So go ahead and turn that off and you will see the new animation and the new Siri in iOS 14. And by the way, you guys see the weather widget is bugged like I was talking about earlier. And then finally, another bug I wanted to mention is inside the music application. I noticed that sometimes when you are playing a song, the music or the background will not line up with the music. So it'll be like a different color. You can have like a white album and sometimes it'll pick up like red from nowhere and put that as the background color. So I've noticed how it's not extremely accurate yet when it comes to picking the dominant color for the background, that cool little gradient. So now let's take a look at the community poll that I just posted about an hour ago. So I just posted this, so the results are still going to be coming in and you guys can check this over on the community tab of my page as well. But I asked, how is iOS 14 beta one been for you? And then leave a comment for your device. So you can see here overall, we have about 13% of people saying excellent, 16% saying good, 5% say decent, 1% says bad, and then we have 65% not on iOS 14 yet. So the majority of people are saying just good, just some minor bugs, as opposed to excellent, no annoying issues. So it seems like a lot of people are having about the same experience as me. And taking a look at some of the comments here, you can see Daniel says he has an iPhone 11, had a couple of resprings and call list taking up the whole screen instead of half the screen and no way to swipe away. So not sure what he's talking about. I don't know what the call list is, but it seems like some people agree there. You can see Aloha Boy says he has some bugs and other apps that crash and makes the device freeze. That's probably, like I said, these social media applications. And then somebody else here talking about Twitter issues, minor battery drain issues on the 10R. So battery drain on the 10R. I've not tested out my 10R extensively. I have done it for a little while, but I cannot tell if the battery is an issue on that or not. 
Pokemon Go doesn't work with this version, so that's another thing to keep in mind if you are a Pokemon Go player. Fidelity here, who is a channel member, shout out to Fidelity, he says it runs pretty great on the iPhone 10, excellent battery, no bugs, and just overall great responsiveness and performance. And you can see here's another issue that I've seen people talking about. I should have mentioned this earlier, but some people are having issues with AirPods and AirPods Pro just randomly disconnecting on iOS 14. So you can see a couple people there agreeing with Ben. Luke here is saying that every time he deletes a note, the app just crashes. So I've not had that. I use notes a lot on all devices and I've not had it crash from deleting, but that appears to be an issue as well. And somebody here with a 6S saying minor bugs and lagging slightly. That's kind of expected with the 6S. My success also lags quite a bit, but it could just be because it's old and it's just a 16 gigabyte device. And you can see here the 6S has some firmware issues as well that enter a false headphone mode. So that's pretty interesting. I've not seen that. Also, we have Matt here who said, just have an annoying bug where I have back tap as a double tap to the lock screen and it'll randomly lock out of nowhere. So again, that was an issue I mentioned earlier with back tap being too sensitive in this first beta. So you guys can go over here and check out all the comments if you want to. Again, most people said that it's good with just some minor bugs, which matches up with my experience on iOS 14 as well. So now should you install iOS 14 beta one on your device? And like I mentioned earlier, if it's not your main device, then yeah, go ahead. It doesn't really matter. But if it's your main device, I would at least wait until the first public beta gets released because you don't want to have crashes and apps just failing on you when you need them the most. So I would wait, but if you do have a test device or just an alternate device, I would go ahead and update it. It's fun to play around with all the new features and changes. And you can also follow along with the videos I do here on the channel. And like I said, expect beta two or public beta one on July 6th or July 13th at the very latest. So that's probably when we'll see the first public beta get released. And that of course is the same time we should be getting developer beta two. But yeah, guys, there you have it. That has been my experience so far with iOS 14 beta one. Let me know how it's been running for you down in the comment section below. How's your battery life, your performance? Have you guys been having the same bugs as me? Do you have any additional features that I didn't share yet? Let me know all your thoughts down there in those comments below. And of course, expect a lot more iOS 14 content for weeks and months to come. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon. Oh,